In this PowerPoint tutorial, I want to show you one of the newer features in Microsoft PowerPoint. And it has to do with animation. It's 3D animation. And it's a feature that you get in Office 365. It might also appear in other versions of PowerPoint. Also, if you don't see this in your version of Office 365, you might just need to do an update in order to get the option. So let's look at 3D animation in PowerPoint. So here I've got a slide for a Spanish class, and the topic of the presentation is transportation, el transporte. And I'm just going to click here on slide number two. Here we have our first vocabulary word about el transporte. It's un avión, which means an airplane. And so now I would like to put a picture of an airplane here. To do that, I'm going to go here to the Insert tab and the Insert ribbon. And here in the Illustrations group, there it says 3D Models. I'm going to click that. Now that takes me to an online 3D Models search bar. So I can search through all of these online 3D models. Now before we do that, I want to show you that I could have, instead of clicking here on 3D Models, I could have clicked this little drop down arrow next to that. And I could have uploaded a 3D model from a file on my computer. So some of you that know how to use 3D modeling programs, you might be able to import a 3D model that you've created by clicking on this drop down arrow and choosing from a file. But for me, I'm just going to choose from online sources. And here I could browse through different collections of 3D models, but I'm just going to do a search for airplane. And it found a few, and I can browse through those to find the one I would like. I'm going to choose this one here and click insert. It's inserting that 3D model into my presentation. Now because this is a 3D model, notice what I can do. I can click this tool, this button here in the center, and drag to adjust the view of this airplane. Okay, so how do I want it to look for the people that are watching this presentation? I kind of like the look of that right there. Just like you would expect, you can rotate the 3D animation just using this circular arrow, just like that. You can also make it bigger and make it smaller using the handles in the corners. I'm gonna keep it about that size there. And I'm going to drag the airplane to the center of the screen. Notice that just as you do with images, you get a little line, a guide that appears to help you know that it's in the center of the screen. And I'll just drop it right there. Next, I'm going to go here to the Animations tab. And over here in the Advanced Animation group, and you'll see that there's an option to Add Animation. So I'll click that. And for me, this is easiest when I have the Animation pane open. So I'm just going to go over here and click the Animation pane to open that up. Now with the Animation pane open, and also with my airplane selected, I'm just going to go up here and click Add Animation. And you'll see that there are several different kinds of animations. There's also different scenes, and you can delve into this quite a bit and have a scene number one, two, three, and four. There's also 3D animations, there's entrance animations, and emphasis animations. Now if I browse down a little bit, you'll see that there's more emphasis animations and there are also exit animations and motion paths. Now all of these are very exciting. In this tutorial though, I want to focus on just a couple of them. And if there's interest, I'll do another tutorial looking at all of the animation options. So here, I want to create a 3D animation for arriving. This is an entrance animation where a 3D model rotates and fades into view. Let's try that. So I click Arrive, and it adds that animation here. So what we have here in the animation pane is we have scene number one. This icon of a person running, that indicates scene one. And as part of scene one, I have this entrance animation. But look, it says on click. So let's try this. I just clicked here on slide number one, and now I'm gonna go down and click this slideshow button. So I click that, here is slide number one. Here's slide number two. Now if I click, look, my animation happens. And so that's not exactly what I was hoping for. I didn't want it to be triggered by a click. So let's fix that. I'll just go up here, and instead of having it say start on click, I'll change that to start with previous. So now that should work. It's going to start with previous. And what's previous? It's the beginning of scene number one. So that should work for me very well. 
Now, if I want to make sure it'll work, I could even just say move earlier, and that animation would play even before scene number one. I don't think that's necessary. Let's try it out. If I start the presentation, look, there it is. It animated right. Now that's with my 3D animation first. What if it's second, but part of scene one, and it's animated with previous? It works as well that way. So either way, that should work. Okay, so this is looking great so far. I'm really happy with how this looks. Now notice, if I want to, I can change the duration of the animation. I could make it really slowly turn and face the viewer. And I'll make it a little slower by changing it to two seconds. Also, you can put in some delays if you want. I'm not going to do that in this case. All right, next, I would like to add another animation. So here on the Animations tab, in the Advanced Animation group, I'll click Add Animation. And this time, I'm going to use another 3D animation, this time the Leave animation. So I select that, and it adds it to my list here of animations. Let's look now at all of my animations in order. So I'll click here at the very top of my animations, click Play From. Here it comes onto the screen, and now it fades away. The Leave animation made it kind of fade away to the side. So I want to change some of the things about that animation. First of all, I am happy that this next one is on click. I want my students to be able to look at the animation, to look at the word for it, un avion, and think about it for a minute. I don't want the airplane just to fly away immediately. I want it to wait until I click, so that's good. But if I click on that animation, I get some options up here. Here are some effect options, and I'll click that. Right now, it's set to leave to the right. You probably noticed that it kind of turned to the right a little bit as it disappeared. I would like it to actually rotate down. Okay, like that. That looks good. Also, in the effect options, I can choose to make the intensity of the animation subtle, where it just barely animates and rotates down, or I can make it moderate, which is what it was, I think, or strong. I'm going to go with strong. And then finally, where is the rotation axis? Is it the view center or the object center? And I don't know about you, but to my eye, that didn't change a whole lot in this case. Okay, I'm almost done with this awesome animation. What I'd like to do next is add one more animation. So I click Add Animation. This time, I'm not going to use one of the 3D animations. Rather, I'll use a motion path. So I'll click this line, Motion Path. And automatically, that's what it does. It makes the airplane move down a little bit down the screen. Now, if you look really closely at the airplane, you'll see that there's an arrow that's appeared. If I drag that arrow down, it makes it so that the airplane will make its way further down out of the slide, right? That's the distance that it's going to travel in my line animation. Now, before we try this, there's one more change I want to make. Here, with this line animation, I'm going to click and make it so that it doesn't start on click, but rather it starts with the previous. So if you look at the previous, the previous animation is started with a click. So when the teacher clicks or advances the slides, what's going to happen is the model will leave, which will make it face down, and it will also move along this line out of the slide. So let's try it out. I'm going to go back to my title slide and start the presentation. There's slide number one. I advance to the next slide. Here comes the airplane. As the teacher, I can talk about this. Esto es un avión. So we can discuss it, we can talk about it, think about it. And then when I'm ready, I can advance the presentation either by clicking, using a presenter remote, or using the keys on the keyboard. And the airplane flies away. So really, we've looked at a couple of things. We've looked at how to insert 3D models. Here on the Insert tab, Illustrations group, there's the 3D Models button. And then we also looked at 3D animations, that when you click on a 3D object and go to Animations tab and Add Animations, you should see 3D animations there. So I'm really excited about these 3D options in PowerPoint. I think they're fantastic. And thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please consider clicking the bell next to the subscribed button. By doing that, you'll be notified whenever I upload another video. 
and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like to support my YouTube channel, please consider becoming a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find links to that in the description below. And if you're looking for a good presenter remote, look in the description below. I have links to a couple of good ones. And if you haven't watched my other PowerPoint tutorials, I would highly encourage you to do so. I cover some really good information about PowerPoint.